Well then, Bunny. Yes. We are here. We have reached our destination. You see, my family and I, we recently returned from a long, a very long road trip. Driving through fields and lush green forests, my wife came up with that phrase. I don't think we did drive through lush green forests, but it was very green. It looked like it. Yeah. Past mountains and through crazy-ass traffic before finally arriving at our intended destination. And that got me thinking, hmm, our podcast, The Pope on Film, it's kind of like a road trip, you know? (laughs) Yes. We start... Yeah, there's no videos in this. No video. I took the videos out because we're no longer on the road trip. Oh my god. So I look up a wall on the television for We start the podcast strong, then the baby starts to cry. Then we stop the show to try and comfort her. Yeah. Then we start again. Then we stop the show so my wife can go pee. Then we stop the show again so that my wife can go pee. <laughs> then after a break, we're still doing all fine and dandy. And then we have to stop the show again so that my wife can go pee. See what I'm doing here? It's subtle. Yeah. It's subtle. It's a subtle thing. Hey, you know what? In my defense, I told you I was going to be the first fucking person and to And I have didn't to go believe pee. you. I'm like, who's going to crack first? I said, it'll be me. <laughs> Is it going to be Amber? And you're like, it's going to be me. And then uh, I'm like. Like 20 minutes out, I was like, damn it, I got to pee. And he's like, are you serious? It's impressive. I told him. I said, yeah. Keep an open styrofoam cup yeah. to pee in. <laughs> That's what I do. When Christian, I want to. I can't remember. I, I, I just got to pee a lot, man. You even yeah. peed all the way there. And then, uh, and then, you know, a lot of on the road, staying the course, losing yeah. phone service, and just slow and steady on our way to our final destination. And that is where we are now. The movie of the week is yes. the 2008 Disney Pixar beginner sci fi horror film, Wally. And yes. that is this week's movie. My my general thesis is this. I love this movie and it's amazing, but it's also really fucked up. Yes. It's a fucked up film. I, now, today, I, 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 I never can fully trust Eva. Eve. Eve. Is it just Eve? I thought it was Eva. No, that's how Wally says it, but it's just Eve. Oh. Because Wally, you know, he's not really a talking robot, but the the power of love compels him to say Eva. Yeah. Eva. The power of love compels Eve. you, bitch. Eva. <laughs> Eve. Anyway, sorry. Now, now today I'm being joined by a rotating cast of characters, including my wife Natasha. Oh. And uh, uh, Destiny and Deanna and maybe Bella. Do I not get a weird name? No. no. Deustiny. Deustiny. <laughs> Natasha. Well, see, our old boss called me that. And I'm Deanna. So Diono. And we all have a lot to yeah, say about this Deanna freaking Deanna. movie, but I just, I, I, I would just like to start for That's a little bit man. about the tone of the opening of this film. Yes. Because the opening of this film scares the shit out of me. It really, really does. Here comes Eleanor. The, it, I think it's the scariest opening in the history of kids' movies. Yeah. It but really is frightening. The first time that Eleanor saw it, it was it was in the it was playing in the waiting room of uh, Bella's therapy, yeah. and it was right when Wally got to the ship, and she's like, "Oh, robot." And she was just in love with it. And she had a lot of fun. And then I said, oh, she really liked that movie. She watched the majority of it. When I get home, I'm going to try and show it to her. But there's a real difference from where she saw the movie than the beginning of the movie. Yeah. She's like, oh, watch this movie. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. What is this horror you have brought upon me, father? <laughs> what the fuck, dad? <laughs> Why is everything dead <laughs> i personally think that it's like right up there with willy wonka uh, going through that weird ass tunnel oh, my, oh my favorite screaming at people then yeah i think the beginning of wally is like right up there yeah tell me what Personally, I think the scariest part is the fact that they use music from freaking hello dolly yes 
God damn it, that, that'll never not piss me off. That that hurt me, yes. I've always Sorry. hated Hello Dolly. Always. Uh-huh. Always. Fucking Hello Dolly. Okay, I'm going to be moving out of the way. I'm leaning on you, though. You okay. No, I guess I can't move. You can hear me, right, Bunny? Yes. See? You can stay. Okay, go for it. Oh, so it's my turn now? Yes, yes. Oh, no, I, was I just, I told you to let me know when it yeah. was my turn. And okay, you okay. This, okay. Then you were going to stop being my armrest. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to move and go and get myself a drink and oh. it, and then hand things over to my wife, Natasha. If you call me that again, I'm going to punch you in your face. My wife, Cheryl. <laughs> That's, okay. That's not Natasha. It's not Natasha. Natasha. Okay, I'm going to get myself a drink. You go for it. Sweet. Okay. Now, look at here. Okay. <laughs> listen, aliens. Listen. I'm not saying aliens. <laughs> aliens. Okay, so the, as Steve was saying at the beginning, this is a fucked movie. I tried my hardest not to like out of the shit out of this. Yeah. She's, she 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 does this. Okay, I didn't want her to knock you um, off. But uh, you know what? I gotta adjust. I can't. The baby is like trying to do acrobats, hanging off my boob, and it's not gonna work for me. <laughs> oh. You're gonna stop crying in a minute. Stop. <laughs> See, told you. Okay, so the beginning of the movie, it starts off so beautiful. You see the galaxy and the stars, and there's Earth, and there's like this brown fuzz around it. It's really fucked up. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And then there's the upbeat song from Hello Dolly. Uh-huh. Which I still have stuck in my head. And this song is leading you into a false sense of security because it's going to tell you, this is a happy movie. It's fun. It's a beat. We're going to enjoy it. Don't pay any attention to the terrible, terrible things that you're seeing on screen. (laughs) No, seriously. Okay, so I've got the opening song here. You've got smog. It pans into the earth, right? Goes right through that huge layer of all those satellites and Uh all that dust and dirt and nasty shit that's like... In the Earth's gravitational pull. Then you go down into the Earth, and you're like, oh, look at that. Those are mountains. Those aren't mountains. That's trash. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Oh, shit. The wind turbines, half buried in trash. Mm -hmm. The power plant, half buried in trash. The power lines. I mean, you've got trash all over. The Earth is an entire landfill. Uh And you're supposed to be ignoring this because your ears are telling you that this is a happy film. Your eyes... It's a different story. Yeah. Um, okay, are you done? Yeah? Okay, cool. And, of course, you see, you don't see vegetation. You see no signs of previous vegetation either. So, no trees, no dead trees. Right. No dead leaves, no nothing. Even though, throughout the film, you see evidence of paper existing. So, there had to have been trees at some point. Right. So, there should be evidence of dead trees, right? No. Right. Apparently not. Um, and, uh, uh, unrealistically high piles of trash, uh-huh. but I guess that was answered for me because they're like skies t- taller than skyscrapers. They're built on top of buildings and stuff. But that's because Wally apparently doesn't have, gravity doesn't count for Wally. He goes up these piles of trash uh-huh. in a weird way. Like you see him going down from a size skyscraper sized pile of trash and he doesn't fall off. Yeah. The tread on his feet are not that good. Um, then you got lone Wally. You just see Wally by himself traveling in this deserted, trash filled, I mean, earth. Sinkhole. Yeah, sinkhole. It's, yeah. it's just. But, but, hello. Hello. You have, <laughs> by and large, everywhere everywhere this is the first time you're introduced to buy and large you got by and large the 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 what is it called mega store no hold on where is it i wrote it down i've got notes huh i don't know what it was called ultra store yeah the ultra store and and so you see by and large and you don't realize how important that is until you see uh the gas station you see the burger place in the bank uh-huh. And you see the um, money. And that's your first sign that 
the world, the entire world has been taken over by by and large. Oh, Literally okay. everything. everything is owned by by and large money. The currency is by and large currency. And there's money on the ground that Wally runs over. Yeah. First of all, after 700 years, that money ha- would have disintegrated by now, considering that it rain, it does rain and there is uh, like dust storms, but it shouldn't be there, but it is because, you know, how else are we supposed to know that by and large took over the entire fucking world? Yeah. Don't see it. And the paper that was, oh, you know, more than 700 years old sitting there with a dude smiling face. His name, uh, by the way, is uh, Shelby Forthright. And I find that funny because yeah. his last name is Forthright and he's not exactly being very truthful about things. Yes. Anyway, let's talk about Wally. Okay. Okay, so Wally is a robot. And he's gay. Shut up. He's not gay. He is, Wally stands for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class. Yes. Okay. So Wallach. Wally. Okay. There's no C at the end. This class. No, that's just Earth. Wallach. Class. Is Earth class so, one oh. No. Huh. It's two, it's but... Two. Yeah, that you think, but it Wall Wally C doesn't really. Yeah. When Wallach sounds kind of Wall-ec. weird. Yeah, so you gotta go Wally. It's like Ben Affleck, but Wallach. Yeah. Wally weird. C is in Wally Cumberbatch. Wally Cumberbatch. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cumberbatch. Wait, wait. No, you. Who's what's his name? Dinkelbert yeah. slapped you back. Who's? <laughs> oh, Bender snatch cucumber patch. My yeah. guy. Yeah. Okay, so Wally, he is a standard uh, waste allocation load lifter yeah. for the Earth. And as he's going through, you see the sign that says, you know, let us clean up, or we're digging you out. We're digging you out. Um, what does it say? We're digging you out something slowly or something like that while you're away or some shit like that. And it's a picture of a bunch of Wallys. And that's right next to a sign that says, do your part, fill your cart. Because, yeah. you know, by and large, it's a big corporation wants you to buy all your shit, even though you have no other place to buy it. So where <laughs> you can buy it from? By and large, owns the fucking world at this point. Okay, Wally has music playing. Uh-huh. Wally has figured out how to upgrade his system. Yes. There are no other Wally systems that you see. And I, I paused and I looked. There are no other Wally units that have this feature they are not equipped with recording they're not equipped with playback they can't play music yeah wally did this on his Uh, own over the duration of 700 years he's been on earth so he he installed a fucking stereo on himself because he got bored he liked (laughs) musicals so (laughs) not only that when we finally get back to the home that Wally lives in, yes. which is the hollowed out hole of his dead mother. Ooh. Um, yeah. If you notice, it's a big Wally unit. It's a Wally transport unit. It, uh, all those things where he keeps all his, what did you call them, Steve? Catch, cut, cut, tchotchkes? Tchotchkes. Tchotchkes. All, tchotchkes. His, all his tchotchkes. Kind of like how a gay man collects tchotchkes. <laughs> Those are where all of the Wally units were supposed to be staying when they weren't in use. Um, uh-huh. As evidence of when he when he folds himself up at night and goes to sleep and then rocks himself to sleep, which is another thing I'm going to get on. Um, on his way home to the home, to his, his dead mother that he lives inside of, um, the, the cockroach is like about to fall off. And so what does he do? He stops, he looks at his tread and he looks at a dead Wally sitting next to him. And he's like, all right. And then the next shot is Wally with perfectly new treads. <laughs> Harvesting parts off of dead body is much like a, a soldier might take another dead soldier's gun. Yeah. Or boots if he needed them that bad. You know, if he was stuck in a trench. Um, so he does, he, yeah, he does that. He's harvesting body parts. As needed. It puts the WD-40 on the tread or else it gets the hose again. Right. Uh, Destiny's husband, Matt, and I were talking. And Matt, Matt is insistent that uh, he doesn't believe Wally murdered anybody. 
for survival. Okay. He thinks that uh, these units died over time and Wally's just harvesting their body parts. Like we wouldn't just, you know, we wouldn't kill somebody for their body parts, which I should have said, yeah, we do. Cause people do that. I mean, you wake up in a fucking tub full of ice because your kidneys are missing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he's insisting Wally didn't kill anybody. I'm, I'm insisting on the fact that he also didn't help them. He has evolved enough as a, a computer to know how to replace his own parts. Uh-huh. Why could why couldn't he do the same with other Wally units? Yes. Like you found a Wally unit that just couldn't be brought back. Take those parts and fix up another one. So you have companionship. Right. He's sitting here. He's watching Hello Dolly. He wants to have somebody there to spend time with. Why not take some of these parts and bring back to life like fucking Frankenstein? One uh-huh. of your Wally. God, compare, stop. One of your Wally partners, you know? Uh-huh. But he doesn't. Not once do we see him attempt that. He even could upgrade them, you know, like he did himself. Yeah. Hell, he he could fucking put line his goddamn mother Wally with the solar panels from the other Wallies. But so so are, are, are you are you suggesting that Wally is a serial killer with mommy issues? I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. I mean, think about it. He may not have personally went out and killed all those other Wallies, but he sure the fuck didn't try to save them. True. Okay, I'm not saying he's going out and murdering them for their parts so that he can make sure he survives the next 700 years. (laughs) But he's definitely taking the parts once they're no longer functioning. Yeah. (laughs) So, and he clearly is sentient enough to know he should keep parts inside of his home so that if it happens, he has them readily available. Yeah. You know, this has happened enough that he knows that he needs these parts that he's storing them up. So he, we know he's smart because he has upgraded himself to have a radio player or a a playback that he can record and playback music. Yes. And so we get back to his home and he's clearly smart enough to be able to take an old VHS player, not even a VCR like device, a VHS player. Yeah. Hook it up to an iPod that plays videos and then rig a magnifying glass to pull over to 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 make it magnified for him to see. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you hook an iPod up to a VCR or a video a VHS player? I don't know. <clears throat> but Wally did. Wobbly leg. Wally can Wally can do that. I can't. I don't know. Maybe it could be maybe it could be done. Maybe we should have Googled. Can can we do that like Wally did? But I didn't because I, I <laughs> really don't have much energy into this film. Seems like a really weird Google question. It does seem like an odd Google question. Maybe somebody yeah, I guarantee there's somebody out here, out out in the world who's done this though. Because I know I'm not the only person who has studied this movie. Like, well, I think I, you should probably search in Google first for how to connect an iPod to a bomb and work from there. Yeah. Well, I've seen DIYs for, like, shoeboxes where you cut a hole and put the the uh, glass from a magnifying glass in the hole and then put your phone camera. Um, oh, yeah, you can make a projector. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking about hooking an iPod up to a, v- a VHS player. Mm, okay, I thought we were talking about just magnifying something. Oh, no, no. Okay. Like, like he hooked like up making a... making a projector. He hooked a VHS player up, because he pulls the VHS tape out of a toaster, <laughs> sticks it in the VHS player, pushes play on the iPod, and then pulls over the magnifying glass. So, like, yep. he, he was able to, to hook that up. Pretty, pretty Along with his upgrades that he does for himself. Well, so there being an iPod means that the world went to shit in, like, modern day. Well, I have the date here. The world went to shit and they left Earth. Uh, the date, the, the year that this movie is set is two, two, <laughs> 28,005. How would you say it? 2805. 2805. Okay. Yeah. 2805 is the year that this movie is set in. Um, because they left in 2105 for a five-year cruise. Uh-huh. I, I figured out the dates. I'm 
I'm serious about this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, okay, this opening scene, I'm going to go back again. I'm sorry. The opening scene is really creepy. Word. When he's going to the mom to live in his home, they show you all these ads that technically shouldn't be working because I don't care after 700 years how fucking weatherproof you make your ads and shit. You're not going to have the power to run these ads for 700 years. You know? Yeah, because you, you would think that they have not gone to solar. Well, or they I wouldn't be into this if problem. they did go to solar, the amount of pollution in the air, they wouldn't be running as strong anyway. Yeah. And the amount of dust, the dust storms that they have, would cover the solar panels in a way that if, even if the sun was shining, it would still be difficult to obtain that energy. Yeah. You know? Anyways, okay, so the ads. Let's talk about the ads. I said they had bunny, uh, bunny, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> by and large money. They, uh, money they money. had the store, the, the ultra store. They had the gas. They had the bank. They had the burger. The ad, there was like luggage. Okay, so by and large luggage. They yeah. had by and large air. <laughs> Bottled air. Yes. Like the Lord Indicating there's not enough plants to create the oxygen that they need. But by and large, had to get the oxygen somewhere. You cannot ma artificially manufacture oxygen. You just can't. I mean, if you wanted to in a lab, I guess you could get it out of water. But once the water is gone, where is it going to, where are you going to get it? <laughs> plants. So I, my thing is, right. by and large, has to have plants somewhere that they're hoarding and using because they've got, you know, a fucking monopoly on food, drinks, air. Uh, drink now, buy, shop, live, creamies. I don't know what that is. One of the ads is just... Well, when a man and a woman love each other. Shut up. <laughs> One of the ads is literally just, hungry now, drink now. Uh, one of the one scarier ones, though, is um, keeping power in our hands. Uh -huh. I'm, assuming, I'm assuming it's an ad for their energy corporation. But it has a double meaning. It's like, okay, so we, we've got to control on the energy. We've got to keep the energy in our hands. But also, uh, uh, not energy, keeping power in our hands. The, uh, by and large, just keeping the power to themselves. Like, yeah. they are in power. They're in control. They're, you know, I'm, try, I'm trying not to meta this movie, but I am. Uh, and another one of the ads is 100% um, reused food. Ooh, yeah. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. How do you reuse food? Daniel as a Daniel? They're eating people. Do you have any suggestions on that, Bunny? Uh, I, I can only... Well, I don't know if eating people would quite qualify. I, I think there's a barfatorium somewhere. I mean... Yeah, re a hundred percent reused food. Yeah. Now, one of the other ads says it's an ad for activewear, I believe. Yeah. And it just says "Run now," which is kind of uh, ominous. Yeah, ominous. Yeah. Uh, considering that they are literally leaving the planet and running away. Yeah. And um, you know, the, of course, the the paper said the the by and large times the by and large times paper declared the CEO was like declares global emergency, um, working to dig you out. Yeah. So uh, those ads, the one hundred percent reused food was really one that got me, and I'm like thinking about that, and it just creeps me out. Yes. <laughs> they're, wow. they're, they're, they're probably See, we'll get to that Vienna. Oh. anyway okay so Wally can That's feel nice. things yes not emotionally I'm not talking about emotionally even though he does have um like advanced complex human emotions he he can feel things physically when the bug is on him uh -huh. he can feel that and uh, he feels it when uh, his hand clamps down and hurts him yeah. So he can physically feel things as well, which establishes the fact that there's a pretty high possibility that the other Wallies were able to feel things, which means no, I, I, I would, 
I think I would disagree on that because I know I, I I think making a robot like that, which is to be cleaning up trash, would be less efficient if it it could feel things. See, that's what I said. Uh, uh, unless maybe maybe they still don't feel pain, but they do. I mean, Wally does anyway. Now, the question is, is this another upgrade Wally gave himself? If so, how did he get the chip? How did he create? He didn't obviously create that technology. Yeah. He had to find it somewhere. Where did he get it? And, I mean, and did he just develop that? You can't. You're a machine. You don't just well, develop the physical this, feeling, do you? This is the, This is the future. So I am going to go with... Uh, Dead human prosthetic limbs. Hmm. And that's a good point because uh, Bella and I were talking about how we believe that there were some humans that uh, stay behind. Yeah. So that's that's a very good possibility. Which is which is very into, which is very Blade Runner. Well, I mean, not all humans would be able to go. Period. Some wouldn't mm -hmm. want to. Some wouldn't qualify, and that's pretty much who populated well, the world in Blade Runner. I imagine because uh, even though it was supposed to be five year tour, the by and large CEO knew they weren't going to be there, they'd be be coming back in five years. Uh, so he had planned all of that. So I guarantee you, if they had any type of disease or illness of any sort, they were not allowed on. Yeah. Because if you're going to put hundreds thousands of people in an enclosed ship you don't last thing you want is disease to spread uh-huh that'll wipe them out your goal here is to survive and you would have to carry more more medications to treat those diseases if you did exactly mm -hmm. so i imagine there are people who were left basically to die on earth yeah um so the Starliners is what they're called when Wally's like uh, going past those ads. The Starliners are leaving every day. So we have no idea how many of these ships are out there. Axiom is just the jewel of the fleet. The deluxe uh, star fleet or Starliner yeah. of the fleet. So we don't know how many people are out there. We don't know how many uh, ships are out there. How many Eves have been sent to Earth? Where are they? This is just New York. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, it, it already foreshadows no need to walk because of the people movers, the people transporters, you know, uh -huh. the little chairs that they sit in. And, you know, they try to frame it in a way where it's positive light. Like, Grandma can even be involved. There's no need to walk. Yeah. You know, but we already know, considering the ads that you were pushing hungry now. You know, yeah, you're making people fat. The burger that it advertised was five, like a five patty burger. Yeah. So they're fat. We already know Americans are the fattest on the country uh, in the world, anyways. Yeah. On the country. On the country. Yeah. On the, the, country. the country. The country. Don't argue um, with me about this. I'm not arguing. Don't worry. Uh, and to add to Steve's, um, Wally is gay. I yes. Gotta, he goes into his, um, you know, hold out shell of his mother. He takes his treads off. Yeah. And he cleans his treads before going into his home so he doesn't track dirt in. Yeah. He's gay. Like he doesn't he hangs them up for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Why do why do you need to do that? Can I go. contribute to that? Yeah, go ahead. Nothing in the movie ever specifically states that Wally is a male robot. Or that Eve is even a female robot. Wally could be a female and it's lesbians in space, or they're just two robots without gender. It is no gender, but the gender, is, but the gender is assumed. Because she's got robot boobs. The gen well, no, the gender is assumed because of the, the Wally has a more masculine type of sound. And, and Eve has more feminine. Has, yeah, and Eve has a more soft, well, not softer, but high-pitched feminine sound. So dirty, it is meant dirty, to, it's butch, made to be assumed. Dirty butch lesbian Wally. Dirty butch lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Just dirty I'm butch. smelling sequel! <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there are women out there. And, and you know what? Fucking trans robots. Fuck it. 
<laughs> well, that's but the whole point of assigning gender onto a robot is is kind of silly. It's ludicrous. Yeah. Assigning gender period or assuming gender period is ludicrous. Um, a gender apart. Let's not talk about gender of the robots because it's a fucking robot. Um, the thing is, okay, he he, Wally, they. Uh -huh. The robot experiences complex human emotions. He has a desire, a longing, and nostalgia for things that he's never even experienced. Fears, worries. He has yeah. a self-preservation instinct. I mean, these are things that a robot does not, especially a working robot who is supposed to be cleaning up trash. There's no need to have those emotions. You're, you know I mean, this is not, um, this is not Star Trek. Okay. And we don't need to install an emotion chip on this robot. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he experiences them anyway. Did those evolve or did he upgrade himself? Again, it all comes down to fucking Wally's a prodigy robot. Somehow. Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, when I think of robots, I am very pro-robot, personally. And pro-robot. I'm down with that. Um. So many people are afraid of robots for no other reason than movies. And that's not really a rational reason to stake a belief. But my question is always, how, how smart would a certain robot need to be? You know, if the robot is just painting lines on the street, well, how much does it need to know you know well i mean when the robot the robot has he's obviously i mean he's a sentient robot he's learning he has the capability to learn he has the capability to upgrade himself and figure out how to do that on its own right well i'm th this is I, i'm leaning again toward like toward he he did this to himself because he picks up trash how smart would you make him you know and why would you give him feelings for the job that he does? Well, and that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying is you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't think to give, you wouldn't think to give this worker robot feelings or no. the ability to physically feel period. You wouldn't give him the radio to play yeah. music. There's no, you know, he has managed to upgrade himself. Yeah. He has stopped touching he had he had to have done that unless there was another Wally around that did it or another robot that did it for him. Yeah. Or a human that survived that did it for him. Yeah. I mean that's a possibility. There's a surviving human that was left behind and they just knew how to do this shit, so they started upgrading the Wally because they wanted a little robot helper friend guy, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's a possibility yeah. too. Most of the world has died. You're lonely. You need companionship. So yeah, you fix up a you exactly. fix up a Wally unit, you find. So maybe maybe a human did do this. Maybe yeah. Wally has experienced, you know, nostalgia. Maybe and he has had companionship. And the you love know, of a man. That's why he loves the, the fucking movie Hello Dolly. The, the play, the musical, whatever. <laughs> because he likes human companionship. Yeah. But, and, and maybe Eve is just different enough of a robot that he's like, all right, cool, I'll latch on to Eve. Yeah. And, and Eve can be my companionship. Maybe Eve reminds him of the human that helped him uh, transform to the wall he is now. Maybe, maybe Eve does remind him of that. Uh, Eve is a, a very angry person, yeah. uh, robot. Yes. Very angry. I think that's how she was made. Yeah, very shoot, she, 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 uh, Eve shoots first. Um, but she loves she, the cockroach. She's like, oh, I'll here. Eve is like, the cockroach, here, come here. And, you know, laughs when it goes uh, under her head. Yeah. So she can feel the cockroach, it tickles her. Um, but she's compassionate. But angry, really angry and resentful, and, and she, when she thinks Wally takes the plant out of out of her stomach, yeah, she gets mad at Wally. I mean, you know, but she there's some open fucking shoot. But the thing is, I don't understand why she would need to have those emotions, anyways. Considering she, unless she came back to the plant, there's literally no reason for her to have any human contact whatsoever. Her job is specifically to be transported to Earth, search Earth for um 
a plant, get the plant, if there is one, and bring it back to the ship. The only reason she'd need to contact the a human is if she brought it to the captain. Yeah. Otherwise, she never encounters a human. Period. Stop it, Eleanor. Um, so why would she need to have feelings? Why would she need to have physical feeling? But she does. Uh-huh. So that that's why I bring up questions about Wally. Like, why do these robots feel these things? Anyway. Uh, da, da. Wally also gets drunk. Yes. If, if he hasn't, if he's low on solar power, he's drunk. Uh, he has um on his eyes. He has an alert for the storms, the sandstorms. Yeah. And he has settings: uh, allocate, sleep, and charge. I don't know why he needs to sleep. Why? Yeah, sleep is interesting. Yeah, unless it's like, a, oh, well, he's in sleep mode. The only reason I could see that is at night when there's no sun to solar power him, but he charges up and then works. He doesn't charge while he works. He doesn't yeah. charge all day. Um, you know, that's the only thing I can think is if he's low, he can go into sleep mode. But when he does go to sleep... He folds himself up, puts himself on one of those shelves inside of his dead mother, but then he rocks himself yeah. to go to sleep. And that's a very human behavior. Mm-hmm. It just and Matt had suggested maybe it's so that he could feel like he was surrounded by other wallies. Because if there were other wallies like getting in and out of the the little compartments, they would be, you know, rocking the shelves. Yeah. But, like, he doesn't need that comfort. He's a robot. Ugh. Anyway. Okay, so... And I, I, well, I also think that, that that would imply that he became conscious on the trip in the transporter. Yeah, let's say, like, if you when a mother's pregnant, the reason the babies fall asleep with the rocking motion is because when they're in the womb, they're rocked slowly as the mother walks. Uh-huh. You know, um, because you, you move, the baby's moving around. It's yeah. part, it's inside you. So, I mean, that's, maybe he did become conscious and sentient while he was still inside. I don't know. Yeah. Doesn't explain. But, because, uh, it, because then that would make sense to have a, a childhood kind of behavior. Yeah. Caused by the other robots. Yeah, but wouldn't the other robots though? I mean, Matt said he he had suggested there there was just a a flaw in Wally's design. Okay. And he was unique in that way, but like, if you're mass producing all these Wallies for the whole entire world, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I, I, and I can't see how. You can have such a cool flaw. Exactly. And it wouldn't just be the one. Right. If it were to happen. Um, okay, so let's talk about the plant. Okay. No sun, no water, no oxygen. Well, he doesn't need oxygen. Plants create oxygen. I mean, perfect weather to, to bring in CO2 and all that to live. But no, no sun. Right. Because it's inside of a refrigerator and no water. How does this thing grow? Well, it does rain. That's true. And that's true. yeah, what's in the atmosphere? Because if it's a lot of CO two, that's that's a that's pretty good. It's for a perfect. A plant. Yeah, it's perfect for that. Um, but again, like no sun. And yeah. Matt argued that most seeds don't need sun right away to when they first pop up. Right. And maybe it's just a fresh little seedling. Possibly. Uh, or had it evolved somehow. Maybe, but that's the thing. is, I don't see that happening. Biology with plants, yeah. you, you have to have sun. You have to have the sun in order to create the, the glucose to 
grow. Okay, so yes, not. but while but, the sun is going away, I, I would imagine, and I'm guessing, but I would imagine you would adapt to um, whatever you do have available to nurture yourself with. Do you think that would happen they, in 700 years? They might years? not. Yeah, that's the problem. That's about what I was just about to say. I, 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 I that might be a little quick for that. But like, I, I'm, I'm kind of imagining like what we are doing to our world right now, and plants would be evolving for their Slowly. survival right now. Like while we're not paying attention, right. basically. But the one that. Oh. And that brings up a whole slew of questions, though. Like, are the plants, like I said, by, by and large, probably had a slew of plants hoarded somewhere in order to to manufacture the oxygen that they were sale, selling? Were those those plants had they evolved to adapt, even if they weren't kept in that same environment? Baby, say that again, please. I'm sorry. And so that by and large had to have a whole slew of plants that they hoarded in order to harvest oxygen to sell. So would that mean that those plants had evolved to adapt to the environment, even though they weren't in that environment? Mm, they could get oxygen through through a you know a, a chemical process, you know, like breaking down particular atoms and things like that. I mean. Oxygen is not is a pretty basic atom. It's a pretty basic atom, but it's not one that you can easily come by without having the power to break the atoms. You can pull it from the water, sure. But once the water's gone, you're going to have to go into some more complex chemical shit to be able to obtain the oxygen. And there's only so many resources. And yes, they're using but, so many resources at it as it is. But NASA so, is honestly working on on breaking down stone well hot damn well i mean because if they could do that then we could live on other planets right and water becomes water and oxygen and hydrogen you know depends on how many chemicals you want to extract from the stone uh exactly. so we can get it out of meteorites asteroids oh what are you doing Playing with Steve's, Steve's playing with filters over here while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but I mean, this is, say, 100 years in the future. Maybe they can do that. Right. But if they could, then you would think they would have more resources to break down the waste to more effectively use it. If they can Good say 100% reused food, then clearly they should have the ability to take any of the other waste that they have to break it down into the chemical components and harvest those atoms to be able to use elsewhere. Like for oxygen, like for hydrogen, you know? Yeah. So. Good point. Good point. Um, but the Aztecs had, had a wheel, had the wheel and never used it in any kind of, in any kind of real way. It was used for children's toys. That's true. Yeah. Just like Wally didn't know how to fucking light a lighter, but he could upgrade his goddamn body to play music. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, okay. Point there. That's for sure. Yeah the functioning uh, fingers to be able to flick it quick enough. He like could, no, he could still do it, though. I mean, he could just hold I mean, the lighter like this. his fingers floated. That's why she could do it. But he had two hands. He could hold it and like that. You know? Uh, okay, so... Do you know sun and water? Now, okay, oh, no. was, um... Was this the first time... Did you think this was the first time that uh, an Eve probe was sent to Earth? To, to New York, or maybe just specifically the place that Wally is, because Wally acts like he's never seen it before at all. But in the 700 years they've been in space, they've had to have sent sent Eve probes to numerous places <laughs> in the world to check for vegetation. But Wally's like, what is this well, laser? 
how a, how many are you sending? And I would think that you would you would send them out at the op- optimal time. And with Wally having found the seedling, that would kind of be the oh. optimum time. Oh, you know, True. so I mean, if they sent if they sent the probes out, I mean, like I said, there's so many places in the world. Um, they may never have sent one to that specific area of New York where Wally's working. I think it's a possibility, yeah. But it just I, it blows my mind to think that there may not have been one. I mean, there may have already been one. Maybe he just didn't notice it. Maybe he was working. They sent it to you know an area he didn't see. Yeah. Because there's so many ships out there. If they were leaving daily, then there has to be more ships with more probes. The yeah. Axiom can't be the only ship no, no, with Eve no, probes. No, 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 no. Um, it just see, I just thought that was uh, interesting. And how well, that would that depend on the power structure. Came in. Yeah, that would depend on the power structure of the society, though. You know, uh, the axiom, these people would have to have been the richest of the rich ah. to live in this kind of luxury. So, you ah. know, you, you're way back in the tugboat. But, yes, okay. The economics, that, that comes up, too. Uh, but like when he sees, I just let's. He has that self-preservation instinct to dig underneath the earth. Yeah. Where did that come from? He's never seen it before. But yeah, he digs under the earth to make sure he survives. True. That's, anyway, um, she's weaponized. Eve is weaponized, and why is Eve weaponized again? Maybe to kill humans that might have survived. Yeah. Mutants. Yeah. Animals that didn't exist. Like, what dangers are there on a dead earth? No. Bye. And what dangers would she really need to protect no. herself from? But I exactly. think I think you might have something with the idea of mutants or uh, humans who've just formed a different society on Earth. Yeah. Or pockets of society. Well, and that's uh, that's another point that that Matt had brought up because Bella was like, "I bet you there was humans there that that had survived." And Matt was like, "Yeah, you know, and they probably were they were they were left behind. They were angry. They probably did a lot of destruction to the machines that were left. Yeah, maybe that's why a lot of the Wallies are dead. I don't know why they would kill the Wallies uh, if the Wallies were helping clean up the trash, though. Uh, large groups of people are not always sane." <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's true. Fuck, man. They get together and they just go crazy. Yeah. Um. Okay. Ow, Eleanor. Uh, and why does she deactivate at night? She she shuts down at night. But why? She's not solar powered. Yeah. She can clearly see at night. She can. I mean, she has robot eyes, basically, yeah. that blink for some reason. Um. But well, she shuts down at night. Like you got a nine to five job, you're a fucking robot. You don't have a nine to five job. You're always on, man. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it doesn't have made no sense to me. Uh, and which may nine... imply that the robots have unionized. That have what? Unionized. Oh, maybe. Maybe they're, they're like, "Fuck you." They'll Just get a paid down. vacation. Yeah. Uh, that's maybe. <laughs> And then well, Wally doesn't have to shut down a night either, uh, point proven, because he spends the night creating a statuette of Eve. Eleanor. Which is, to- which is again, some serial killer shit to do. You know? You know what I'm saying? Which one is this? Yeah. When some guy likes you and then starts building an altar, yeah, you got you got problems, What's- girl. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that even at that point, he had me, right? He didn't... um. Did he, uh, yeah, at that point, she knew he was there. Yeah, you're building, you're building me a statuette, and we've barely talked. I, I tried to shoot you. Yeah. We got some issues, you know? Uh, all, and a uh, shout out for the Pizza Planet truck. Yeah. In the movie, yeah, shout out for that. And also, okay, the magnet, the magnet that grabs Eve. How was that moving? I would have to see that again and see if maybe she was moving it. 
Uh, Bella said that maybe the magnet was just attracted to her. Yeah. And while, because it moved with her until it caught up to her and then attached to her to it. Oh. I mean, that's the only logical explanation, unless the ship is haunted. <laughs> or, or maybe the ship is sentient itself. Who knows? But I, I think Bella's got that one uh, figured out. I think that the that she was flying too close to the magnet, so the magnet was moving with her. Yeah. And then once it got to her, it grabbed onto her. Yeah. Which, again, her display of anger, she got so mad, she destroyed the ship. And the ship, which clearly was docked somewhere along with the other ships, it's completely on dry land now. And all those ships domino and fall down. So, like, um, no. Jesus Christ, where'd all that water go? Oh, yeah, they probably <laughs> sourced water, uh, air from it. Yeah. Um, okay. Ocean's dried up. Oh, oh, Bella pointed this out to me. I didn't really notice it before. Eve cycles through languages. When, when she's yes. asking Wally what his directive is. She cycles through languages until she gets to English and he understands it. Huh. Yes. Um, but the only language they speak on board is English. Now, that is interesting because clearly when they first got on the Axiom, there had to have been other languages spoken, especially if you're coming from New York. So how quickly did they breathe that out and just stick to English? That are you okay? Um, but like nobody speaks another language but English on that ship. Yeah. After 700 years. But the robots still do because they're programmed with it. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was amazing because she automatically her first instinct was not to ask him his directive in English. Despite the fact that they were in New York. Yeah. She went through several languages first. Um she sneezes. That's a very human thing to do. Robots don't sneeze. And there's a robot on the Axiom that has allergies and <laughs> sneezes several times. Yeah. I find that interesting. Um, stored harvested parts. And she looks at him when, because she, she dances, she does the spin and hits him into the wall and his eyes fucked up. And then yeah. he finds a new eye and puts it on. And he was like, ta-da, like, see, see, I, I fixed myself. And she stares at him for a minute, like, Kind of like I did. Like, holy shit, you just harvested somebody else's eye and put it on your face. Yes. And I, so I think maybe Eve, like, knows that this motherfucker could be a serial killer. I mean, he did erect a statue of her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just saying, behavior's there. Eve knows. She can't help but fall in love with him anyways because he's charming. Like most serial killers. Yeah. It would, it would, it would be, yeah, it would be kind of like your, kind of like your date. He brings you home to like his apartment or mansion or whatever. And he's like, let me get into something co more comfortable. And he goes away for a while and you poke around and, you know, look in the medicine cabinets and things like that. And he comes out wearing a human skin suit. Yeah. Yeah. And not, yeah. probably not even a suit, like a dress. Cause he is actually a cross dresser too. And she's fine with that. He told her about that. She was like, that's okay. I accept you for your quirks. I it's don't like shame. Wood. Yeah, like I don't shame wood. you. But now you're coming out wearing a dress made of human skin. So I might have to draw a line somewhere. But you're still pretty charming and you've got a cute smile. So yes. Let's, let's see where this goes. I have a fan somewhere. Honey, can you plug it in? Please? It's me. I'm your fan. I am hot as fuck. Oh, my view. Check. I have oh, our... right there between Eleanor's dresser and the desk. Anyway, okay. okay. I'm trying to get through this part because the real, real good stuff happens on the ship. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the stored harvest parts, uh, her power surge. She, when he shows her the plant, for some reason there's a, a power surge you don't see and turns off all the power in his in his little mommy home. Yeah. Um, there's no dead there. mommy home. Oh, it's in the closet. Um, mm -mm. Oh, yeah, it rains. So there is enough water on this planet somewhere that it rains. Yeah. Even if it is polluted rain, it's there's still water there. And he also takes her uh, along 
Yeah, my foot is up there. He also takes her along the, it looks like, I think Steve said the Hudson River. Uh-huh. Uh, like gondola type um, thing when she's deactivated. Uh, and it looks like sludge. Yeah. It really does. It's, it's really nasty. I've been adding every now and then. I, I honestly have nothing to add. I'm just listening in awe. Um, <laughs> so, so, so am I. <laughs> hey, I, I do this literally every Saturday. I, I do meta for Supernatural. So I tried to t- tone it down a little bit for this movie. Um, sure. <laughs> shut up. This is toned down, trust me. Anyway, um, so there's enough water on the planet for there to be rain. And uh, Steve has some consent concerns uh-huh. when it comes to Wally and Eve because she's shut down and he opens her panel and then shocks Ooh. the shit out of himself. Yes, I, that really bothered me. Like, like a little tiny bit. Yeah. So, so Steve was like, I, uh, there's some consent issues going on here that I'm not exactly comfortable with. Yeah, and he's always, like, touching on her, and she's like, Wally! Yeah, when he, when she's actually active, she doesn't want him touching her. But when she's not active, he's, like, opening up her panel and trying to stick his cords in her. <laughs> I mean, That's in his hot. his defense, he was using a jumper cable, and I think he thought that there was, some, like, she, she was yeah, hurt he or tried, something. Well, he tried and he was to just trying her. to revive her. He like was, because started. he tried to put her on the roof or, and get her powered up by the sun like he does. Or he's doing some freaky shit. He really likes the electro play. Ooh, I, gotcha. I am. Um, I, I am. That's fun to watch, by the way. Funny. But. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, funny since the freaky shit. That, that sidetracked me. Um, no, I had seen it in an S&M club I had gone to in. Um, Manhattan once down on 29th, I think. Well, anyway. Um, hey, I mean, you forget know what? it. That totally re-railed me, derailed me. There's some like violet wand stuff that I really want to get. They look really awesome. Yeah. Are we talking about sex? Well, no, we're talking about. Anyways, back to Wally. <laughs> <laughs> I am a. Um, so, okay, and this here's the thing. He holds her hand again. Yeah. He pries her hand away from her body and holds her hand, and then her hand wants to go back into her body, and he's like, fuck, that hurts. <laughs> it's like those, uh, one of those tampon attack things. That, like I don't know what the fuck they were called, but they were designed for women to protect oh, them from rape. Oh, okay. yes. Like, the, like they're like I vaginal mean, condoms. No, no, it's not even a condom. It looks like a little tampon, and you like stick it inside of you, and it's hollow and it's got all the spikes, but yeah, it's backwards and then, facing, and then so they and can't if, take it off. And then if a man rapes you, they impale their penis on it, and it's like a what animal is it, does that? Like when you struggle more, the the yeah, it just tightens. Like so it tightens up. Finger. Yeah. So your vagina becomes a Chinese finger but trap. But yeah, your vagina ear. becomes yeah. a Chinese finger trap. But it's like with needles uh. Uh, on your penis, <laughs> and you have to. Go so you a... have to go to a doctor to get it yeah. removed. Now you yourself, and you're, you're out not as a rapist. There. And then you're outed as a rapist, and uh, you get to be put in jail. So unless you want your dick cut off, yeah. I mean. Sounds like a fun day to me. It's a fun <laughs> fucking day. Let's do this. Better than anyway, that. so that's what that reminded me of. Because uh, Eve was like, bitch, I don't want you to touch me. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so so I, I, I am thinking that Wally could be brought up on some charges, yes. Wally probably could be brought up on some charges. But you know what? Yeah. He's 700 years old. He doesn't know any better. He just sees these people in this this uh, it's how musical. He, was he sees people in this musical holding hands, and he's just like, "I'm starved for attention. Let me fucking hold your hand." I'm not making excuses for him because this is not okay. But I mean, he's living inside of his. He, yeah, he's living inside of his dead mother, and he yeah. harvests parts from his brothers and sisters. Well, what did you expect? Yeah. At this point, I think consent issue might be the least of our worries. If, at least he saw Hello Dolly and not like Debbie Does Dallas. Oh, oh, 13 candles. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been bad. Uh, okay. So, okay, now, here we go. Eve gets picked up, right? Uh, and also, a side, side note, Wally has trained his cockroach like a dog. <laughs> yeah. Stay and it does. So the cockroach is, like, chilling, 
while Wally, because like he's he's so concerned about Eve, and then he just leaves, and he's like, oh, okay, well this is Sorry. this is going nowhere. I'm not going to be able to get this bitch to wake up. I guess I'm going to go back to work, put my little lunchbox on my back, go fucking squash some trash in my belly, and then he sees the ship coming, and he it's rushes to Eve, <laughs> and it's too late. So he grabs on, and he's climbing the ship. And he gets there, at, uh, and the ship takes off. He should have died. Yeah. He should have fucking died. The atmosphere should have burned him up when they were leaving. I want I want a clip of you saying, squash some trash in my belly <laughs> on my phone so I can just play it over and over again. <laughs> squash some trash in my belly. Anyway, first of all, he should have been able to hold on to those handles for that long. <laughs> Second of all, he should have burned up in the atmosphere on the um, exit. But he didn't. Okay, it's a movie. I get it. Cartoon. We're not being realistic here, but I am. Uh, and then, so, he, they go, they're in space, and they finally get to the Axiom, and all that. The Axiom is just sitting there. Oh, oh, we passed the moon! And and there's an ad on the moon that says that there's an outlet mall coming soon. Uh-huh. Um, so they, they were already in planning on building on the moon because they put an advertisement up there for it. Yeah. Um, and there was also Eve, when she was looking for a plant, there was also, what do you call those? You know, when a spaceship, the, 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 the people come back to earth. Yeah. And Astronauts. the little pod that they're in. Um, that like floats down. The with capsule. The yeah. Eve looked inside one of those. So clearly they were doing um, outer space exploration frequently enough that there's one that's more uh, on the top of all the trash. Yeah. They were planning on expanding and trying to live on the moon. And I guess they just gave up on that idea and just said, fuck it, let's go to space. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I let them all on the moon, uh, which was also American based because there's an American flag on there. I don't know if that was intended there from <clears throat> Buzz Aldrin or if they had put it there when they put the ad, which says something because when you see the video of the CEO, there is no American flag because they rule the world. There is a flag with earth on it. Mm -hmm. So there's, I mean, there's no longer countries. It's just earth. And he fucking runs the world. Um, Fred Willard. Fred Willard. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, hold on. I got his name here again. Shelby, Shelby forthright. forthright. <laughs> uh, so the axiom is just sitting there, idle. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Wally Christian doesn't realize the repercussions of his actions. Because he gets Or at there least that's what his lawyer says. <laughs> right? Mo. I love Mo. Mo is a dedicated little bastard. I fucking love Mo. He, right? He gets out. He's like, all right, Eve, you're dirty, foreign contaminant. Let's clean you. All right. That could let's be hot. Yeah, that could, yeah be, that's, that could all be hot right there. I, I, you know what? I was offered one time to, to help clean somebody some of some foreign contaminants. Yeah. Yeah, but I I declined. But did but oh, but sorry, like sorry, would it have been extra for you to talk like Mo? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was free. Oh. Uh, he, my friend and I were at a mixer, and he was like, "Here, I won these prizes. Do you want this prize or this prize?" And I was like, "I'll take this prize." It was a bunch of gift cards, and he got the girl who had the body paint and was completely naked except for the body paint. He was like, "My prize is to go and wash her off in the shower. You want to come with?" And I was like, "Eh." Foreign contaminant. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Anyway, she consented. Oh, she consented hard. Anyway. Why can't my um, life be that interesting? You have no idea the things I've done. Um, anyway, where was I? Fuck. I got all foreign uh, contaminant. Foreign, foreign contaminant. contaminant. Mo! Mo is fantastic. Mo is the first robot that Wally teaches free will. Uh, yes. He, Moe's there and he's like, motherfucker, you are dirty as shit. And Wally's like, don't Jesus, touch me. Mo. And Moe's like, no, I'm going to clean you. Come here. I'm going to wash your ass off because I can't have you muddying up my axiom. And so <laughs> Wally's like, touches his nose, like his face, his little face. And he's like, ah! And he freaks out. It's adorable. And I love this little robot. He's the best thing of this movie. 
because he's determined. And then Wally's like, fuck you, they're taking Eve, so I'm going to follow. And then Moe was like... Chris Rock is voiced... Uh, uh, Moe is voiced by Kevin Hart. By Kevin Hart. <laughs> I'm going to wash your ass off because you are dirty as hell. And so... so Mo, R.I.P. Ricky! Moe is like, all right, I got to stick to the lines because, you know, there's rules and we got to follow these rules and there's these lines and... Unpopular opinion, I really fucking hate Kevin Hart. Same. So he, and then when when Wally is like, fuck your lines, uh, I'm gonna go whenever I want, Moe's like, all right, all right, hold on, what do I do, what do I do? Okay, and he jumps off the line. Boom. Free will. Moe discovers free will, thanks to Wally. (laughs) So, Moe follows him through the entire fucking ship, cleaning up after his dirty ass. I mean, I love that little robot. He's so determined he goes down the trash chute and everything. He is the best thing about this movie. So pure. He just wants to be clean. Anyway. Oil. So, no, I don't want to be clean. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> okay, so the Axiom. Um, everyone on the Axiom is on their robotic chairs. Yes. And they float around. And they talk to each other on their little screens, even though they're right next to each other. Mm-hmm. And there's ads. It hurts literally, to turn your head. <laughs> right, it hurts to turn your head. You don't have the muscle no. development. Um, so there's ads everywhere, just like there was on Earth, even though none of these people are looking past the screen in front of their face. They're, they're not seeing them, but they're there just in case they do. Yeah. Um, and there's a sign that says, live your dreams. They can't live their dreams if they're literally being raised to never even walk. Uh, and there's one that says, buy now, pay later, which step, uh, leads me to believe that they, these people are just racking up debt after debt after debt to a corporation that runs their lives and has run their lives since, you know, for 700 years now. Um, but for what? Like, how are they making money? They're not. Yeah. They're not working. They're not doing anything. Um, so that that also brings me to uh, the babies. Okay. Uh, these babies, when you first see them, they're all in these little tiny hover chairs. And they all have these little red little suits on. And they got binkies in their mouth. And there's a robot teaching them the ABCs. A is for Axiom, the ship where you live. B is for, by and large, your whatever, like some Your fucking propaganda. best friend. Your very best friend, yeah. Some, like, bullshit, by and large, propaganda from yeah. birth. Like, from birth. And it's called All Day Care. All Day Care. There's not one parent on this ship who's parenting a child. Yeah. The robot is doing it. Okay? So, you got where... This. You got this. These babies never learn to crawl. These babies never learn to walk. Uh huh. They learn enough to hold their head up, barely. Let's so they don't have the motor roll. the motor movements that they really need, except to what? Pick up a cup and drink the fucking sludge that they give you every day to yeah. drink and nourish yourself. Um, they they learn English and only English. They're not taught any other languages, despite if they're black, white, yellow, orange, green, purple, or pink. Um, (laughs) Now, but as a man, (sighs) where do these babies come from? Where did what? Where do these babies come from, Bunny? When a fat mommy and a fat daddy love each other very fat much. (laughs) Okay, see. They're not copulating. They're not fucking. Money. For one, you know this, the having sex makes your heart rate go up like crazy fucking like high. You know that well, the people die sometimes for having sex because they're fat? Yeah. Yeah. Check that shit. Okay. Here's yeah. the thing. 700 yeah. years. 700 years. How many generations? Uh, now. 20 years is a generation. 20 years knowledge. is a generation? Okay. 20 years is a generation, 700 years, how many generations would that be? I'm not doing the math, I don't fucking care, but everybody is living, at this point, when they first started, people were living to at least 150 years, as uh-huh. proof by when we got to see the pictures of the captains, 
assuming they started becoming captains at 18 years old. Yeah. The first captain was a minimum of uh, almost 160 before he died or stopped being the captain. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because he was captain for 143 years. We did the math today. And it gradually goes down. Their, quali- their, their, their captain years and the life. Mm-hmm. But these people have gone from... What are, if you want to believe the video, the ad, they've gone from healthy, fit people to being incredibly overweight and going around everywhere in chairs, falling out of the chair and acting like a goddamn turtle on its back who can't get up without assistance from a robot. Right. So they're not having sex. They're not procreating. They're not. They're just, that's a fucking fact. Where are these babies coming from? Now, it's my personal belief that these robots have a breeding program. Yeah. They are picking the ones that they find the healthiest and the most likely to be the best genetic pool. And they're keeping them in a fucking place on the ship that nobody discovers until after they get back to earth and they're fucking exploring the ship and they're breeding them either artificially or they're, you know, I don't know, simulating a fucking different time for these. Like they're living a completely different world. Yeah. Who knows? But I think that they're probably just keeping them comatose on a fucking drip, artificially inseminating the women with the best sperm on the ship, and then popping them out. Because I doubt that they have discovered how to do, to to simulate a womb, you know, and have like test tube babies. So they have some sort of fucked up breeding program going, which is a whole nother slew of consent issues. (laughs) Yes. You know, because nobody's fucking, they're not. They're not, they can't even walk. They never learn to walk because as babies, they're putting the fucking little hover, what are they called? Ho- hover uh, walking chair things yeah. that they never walk with. So. Of which you would have to imagine that those hover chairs must, would probably have some kind of a recall feature. So basically, yeah. basically, if the robots wanted to do anything to anybody on the ship, they wouldn't call that person and wait for their consent. They would just have the hovered chair come home. As evident by the end, when uh, the captain says that, you know, he pushes that button for the vet, for the plant yeah. and every single person's chair, they get that oxygen mask put on them and they are all gathered in the Lido deck mm-hmm. without their consent, sleeping and not sleeping. They're there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I doubt that they are taking any of the fat people, though, because when you're that overweight, you have issues with ovulation as a woman. Oh, really? But, yes. When you become overweight to a certain point and you're not healthy enough, you can have ovulation issues. You barely menstruate. Yes, Deanna? Uh, I was thinking maybe that's where the pay later comes into play. They owe the company, so they have to follow what the company fucking says. But where's the company? Who's running the company? The robots. The robots at this point who don't give a fuck about money. Why would they care about the money? Programming. They're not they're not humans. Humans are greedy. Robots are not. They're they have directives. Every one of these robots is a directive. Okay, that's why Otto at the end is like, this is my directive, you motherfucker, and I'm going to put everybody on this ship at risk to obey it. So, no, I mean, it's not even that. But, yeah, I mean, these women are so overweight that and not healthy enough to be able to menstruate, let alone ovulate. Yeah. So they have to take they have to be taking babies and raising them healthy so that they can have a breeding program. But you're not supposed to think about that. Because yeah. this is a half upbeat story about two robots who fall in love and save the world. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Moving on from my breeding program, because there's more. I've got so much to say about that. Um, so we meet Mary. No, right. we meet John first. We meet John first because he's trying to hand Wally his empty cup of what Dean and I believe might be Soylent Green. Yeah. Um. Probably pizza flavored soil and green. <laughs> um, so we meet John. John is an overweight white dude with freckles. So who, uh, <laughs> you're not an overweight white dude. I'm 
Oh, You're not a boy. Shut up. And um, so he falls out of his chair because Wally doesn't know what the fuck is going on. He's like, why are you trying to hand me that? And backs up and dude falls out. And then he's like, holy shit. Uh, okay. So shit happens. Whatever. He gets back in the chair. And later when we see him again, he has the screen back in his face. Yeah. Um, and then Wally goes and um, he follows Eve. And then he, again, teaches a robot something. When the the hover thingy brings Eve into the room to be to be uh, examined, cleaned, cleaned yeah. and fixed, he teaches that robot to wave. Oh, the robot! All the robot's doing is pushing buttons, and then Wally just waves at him, and the robot's like, "Oh shit, I can make that movement too!" So the robot waves at him. So he's teaching robots uh, free will all over the place. Once he goes in, and then once he comes out, the robot's doing nothing but waving. The robot's just yeah. The robot's just waving. Job. Now the robot is just a waving robot. Yeah, he's just waving at Wally, and Wally's like, "Huh? Yeah, Look, okay. there's the guy that told me to wave. Hi!" Right? Yeah. And do you know okay. why? Do you know why? Because Wally turns the whole world on with his smile. Oh, that is so true. Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself though, because. Let's go to uh, the captain's quarters. <laughs> okay. Destiny's having a fucking aneurysm. Deanna's turned Jesus on. Christ. Destiny's turned on by captain's quarters. <laughs> it's a interestingly <laughs> fetish. Uh, okay, uh, so we're at the captain's quarters, and Otto is like, "Well, fuck. Okay, we got to deal with this shit. Let me go wake up the captain." And it's like. 1245 or something yeah and the captain he's like captain you're needed on deck That's and what, so the captain yeah. gets up and he is like wally massages his toes which is just like all kinds of weird and then <laughs> then the captain goes up and he is like getting coffee and Otto's like captain he's like hold on Otto. and then he's like protocol and then he goes and checks systems and all that and then when he asks about the passenger count uh-huh. It says un- it says unchanged. I call bullshit. Okay. There are thousands of people on this ship. People are born and people die. Clearly evident by the fact that there's fucking babies. And it's been 700 years. Hello, people are going to die. Even if they only live, if they live 150 years now, they're still going to fucking die. You know, people it, die every day. It depends on the robot breeding program. I guess, see, I mean, that's what I said to Bella. I said, maybe the robots have it so that if somebody dies, there's a baby born. Right. So the count doesn't change. And the captain doesn't really think about that because nobody's supposed to fucking think about that. This is a story, happy and upbeat, about two robots <laughs> falling in love and saving the world. So the pastor count was unchanged yet again. And then uh, he looks at the time. And he's like, are you kidding me, Otto? I wasn't up for morning announcements. And he seriously says, it's the one thing I get to do on this ship. The captain acknowledges. That's the only fucking thing he does. It's yeah. the morning announcements. And that's when we find out that it's the 700th anniversary of their five-year cruise. So uh-huh. now, is it like 700 like from the day they set off? Or is it 705? Well, it's still 700 years. Either way. But he acknowledges that it's the one thing that he gets to do on the ship. Yeah. That he doesn't do shit. So we went and um, we paused. There have been one, two, three, four, five. He is the sixth captain on the ship in 700 years. Okay. First captain was from 2105 to 2048. He was 143 years. The second one was 2248 to 2379, 131 years. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So, there is a captain, a year without a captain from 2379 uh, and 2380. So, there's a year missing. Okay. And then there's a year missing between that captain and the next one. And there's a year missing from that captain to the next one. And there's a year missing from that captain to the one that we currently have. Now, it is our theory that there have been other probes sent out and come back yeah. with vegetation. But the captains reacted in similar fashion. But instead of the revolution that occurs because of Wally, 
Otto was the able to silence them. Well, there's not really much of a revolution because Otto is is successful, or Otto shows them maybe the 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 message that that he showed the captain about how the world is not sustainable and we just got to give up and stay. You know, it's easier to stay on the ship, and so the captains are okay with that. Or they tried to revolt, and Otto silenced them. Otto kept them confined to their quarters, and killed them all. For the next, then for that next year, Otto was the only one running the ship. Yeah, because nobody notices if the captain does a daily announcement or not, because they all got their their faces and stuck in a screen. Nobody looks up. Yeah. Nobody really pays much attention. Um, so you know, it took a year for Otto to find a captain, a suitable captain, a captain that would well I, allow what, him to be captain. What exactly would be suitable in this world? I I, I think that they would become captain by some kind of contest. Well, I mean, I don't know how they would become captain. I, I honestly, since they since they don't do anything, they don't really have to be suitable for anything. They have to be pliant. Yeah, they have to be accepting. They they have to be unquestioning. But that seems to be the whole society. It does. Yeah. It does. I mean, or or hear me out. They breed their own captains. They have a breeding program. Maybe yeah. they're raising one to be captain. Maybe. They just have a bunch of them on a different part of the ship that they pick one from. Here, these are going to be the captains, and they just pick one and put them in. It's possible. That, you know, that could happen, too. Um, also, the captain that we currently have is the only one that has a first initial on his picture. Yeah. All of them are only their last names. Um and this guy, I'm going to call him Brian, because it's a B. Okay. Uh, he, has a, he has a first initial. I don't know. Does that, I didn't look in the credits. I guess I should have looked in the credits. Um, do you want to get up on the bed, honey? Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, get up on the bed. Um, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> captains, yeah. And in the photos of the captains, the captain's portraits. Yeah. Uh, Otto is in the background, but he every single picture he gets closer and closer and closer. Yeah. And you know you don't really notice this at first until um the captain is looking at the portrait and cool. sees Otto in the background of all of them. Uh-huh. And then Otto comes up behind him. Uh Okay, so and, and then he goes on the, the the message from the CEO, uh-huh. forthright says, uh, due to microgravity, you might have uh, just um, experienced a slight bone loss. Yes. Uh, five years would not have done that. So he obviously had planned for longer. And uh, also, if the bone loss had happened in a manner in which is shown on screen, every single one of these people would have been crushed under their own weight. Yes. Because had their ribs not protected their lungs, their body weight would have suffocated them. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't think that uh, the CEO uh, uh, understood science. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's, he's but, not a man of science. Okay. He's a man of money. But the CEO would have had to have done the, Hey, Bon Voyage kind of speech and the sorry earth is still fucked kind of speech before they left. Okay. We'll see. That's the thing. He did the, that he did the, yes. And they were working towards cleaning up earth. Yes. So, I mean, he knew he was a man of science to a certain extent. He was probably a man of science to a certain extent as much as, say, Donald Trump is a man of science. He surrounds himself with people who he expects to know what they're talking about and tell him what's happening. As opposed to educating himself and making sure that this is the correct thing. Uh, Like Donald Trump doesn't believe in global warming. However, if he had surrounded himself with actual scientists, Uh then he would understand it's a thing. Yes. You know? 
And he has easy access to him. He just, anyways, not politics. Okay. Um, he doesn't know they have a jogging track. No, he did not know they had a jogging track. He did not know. Um, and then, uh, so they got, he sends Eve off to get cleaned. That's when we meet Mary. Uh, Wally's following. And uh-huh. Mary's sitting there talking to her friend. And Wally's trying to get by her. And he knocks her, her screen offline. She's talking to her friend about hollow dates. Yeah, talking to her friend about hollow dates. So they still date. Yeah. Virtually. Um, and so she not, Wally knocks her screen offline. And she was like, oh. And she looks up and at her surroundings like she's never seen it before. Because she probably hasn't. Uh-huh. And she's just amazed. Now, the difference between Mary and John is that Mary doesn't put her screen back on. We Later, we meet John again, and he's got a screen on. And Mary's like, I'm turning your fucking screen off because you need to see how pretty this is out here. Yeah. And he was like, holy shit. Um, so, we, so we met Mary. Mary and John. Mary and what is... What is... Uh, hmm. What was Virgin Mary's husband's name? Joseph? Joseph. Joseph. Too bad it wasn't John. Anyway. Might have been a little too on the nose. Might have been too on the nose. Because, I mean, they got all these kids and just, they got to help repopulate the earth now. Anyway. Um, where am I? Oh, yeah, that's where we see the earth flag. Yes. Because earth. And, um,. Uh, da, 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 da. Then we go to see all of the crazy robots. This is like a robot insane asylum. And Bella pointed out something to me. What? She said, why do they need a road painting robot when they're not going back to Earth? Good point. And I told her. they, he, the, the CEO... Uh, forthright had to convince everybody that they were going back to her. So that if that meant keeping up pretenses and putting on a road painting robot on the ship, then so be it. Yeah, good point. Um, also, when uh, Eve is in the, the room with the umbrella that's all fucked up, there's a defibrillator robot. Uh-huh. Which means instead of employing actual medical staff, they predicted this and they made sure that there was a robot medical staff. Yeah. And it's a it's a fucked up defibrillator because it, he's practicing on a fake on a dummy and it starts on fire. He electrocutes its face and it starts on yeah, fire. Yeah, he electrocutes the dummy's face and it starts on fire and then they have to put the fire out. He goes right for the face and put the right for in. the face. Right for the face. Like this guy's <laughs> trying to kill the people. Um, there you go. Just get your hand in there. So oh yeah, and, and Mary's oh my god, I didn't know we had a pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they're so connected to their screens that they have no idea the surroundings that surround them. That are surrounded. <laughs> The surrounding area. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading my notes wrong. I have down Eve knows how to work an escape pool. Okay. No. Odd. Odd. <laughs> Eve knows how to work an escape pool. But I need an escape pool. <laughs> an escape pool. It says <laughs> pod, not pool. Uh, sometimes I jot things down pretty quick and I can't write read my own writing. Um, so Eve, okay, after Wally is, like, freaking the fuck out, because he's just that human, uh, he breaks all the crazy robots out, and they start a revolution. Eve knows how to hide. She knows how to avoid capture. She knows how to get him to, she recognizes, knows how to get into an escape pod. Uh-huh. And then how to use the escape pod. The odds of her being trying to use the same escape pod that this little guy is going to try to shoot the plant out and destruct it. Destruct, yeah. Destroy it. That's just fucking bullshit. But anyways, so she knows how to do these things. Why does she know these things when she, all she is, is an Eve probe who's sent out to Earth to look for plants? That's not no fucking... Like, why does this Eve know how to do this? I don't know. Yeah, it's why bullshit. so much combat? Yeah. 
Yeah, like, are you ready for a robot war? Are all of these robots equipped with this? Is there going to be some sort of, like, human versus robot thing going on? Are you going to encounter aliens that need to be destroyed? Are you going to go back home and have to battle the mutants on Earth? I don't I don't know. I don't know. She's weaponized. She's smart. <laughs> and um, we also thought that maybe that these aren't escape pods, that maybe they are suicide pods. Oh. Because there's a self-destruct button. Okay. I said that. Yes. Actually, that was a little bit lower. <laughs> that that was that was all destiny. Just like maybe maybe they're suicide pods. Maybe they are. Maybe maybe some of these people realize they're worthless little lives or fat lives. And they're like, fuck it, I'm sad. I'm gonna go on this suicide pod and self-destruct. Boom, they're dead. Uh, I thought maybe they're murder pods. Okay. Maybe. Maybe some humans get out of hand and the robots uh, 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 send them off to the pods to die. Uh, I mean, there's self-destruct buttons. You can't, that, that this robot activates and you can't stop it. So what do you think? Suicide pod, murder pod, Suicide. escape pod? Ooh, good question. Uh, I think I'll go death pod. Death pods? Yeah. Yeah. Tide pods. Tide pods. Sometimes you just got to take a human out. You know what I'm saying? Somebody. Yeah. That's what I thought. Uh, okay, so. Murder, 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 suicide. We just got to look after you. Oh, yeah, and the captain educates himself on Earth and then decides, oh, well, we just have to take care of you, little guy. Oh, we really have to go back to Earth and then just plants, I don't, I, pizza plants. It's a fucking, you know, I don't know. Okay. And Eve can somehow override her directive it's because she wants to hold the fucking hand now. She sees, she sees Wally's creepy behavior through her security cam yeah. and is like, oh, it's so sweet. This is like classic textbook abuse victim. Okay. <laughs> Like he, he, it's not. You know, she's making excuses for Wally. He just wants to hold my hand. He wouldn't do that. Like otherwise, you know, bitch, please. That's creepy as fuck. And you should go ahead and let Wally stay in the trash. Anyway. Um. So now I'm out of notes here because I just I need to talk about this. Let's go talk about death. Okay. These people die. What the fuck happens to their bodies? They eat them. Reused food. Exactly. One hundred percent reused food. Food. They eat everything out of a cup already. I swear <laughs> I to you, buddy, they are eating soylent green. And if they're not, okay, eating soylent green with um, other enhancements for nutrients, then they burn them up. They have to. Or here's my other theory: they have a whole fucking floor of the axiom. That is nothing but plants. Again, manufacturing oxygen and in while you're in outer space in a big ass ship like that with no scientists is not something you can do. Okay. They have to have plants. So at least to create oxygen, if not to use for food, then to create oxygen. Maybe they're using the people to fertilize these plants to keep them alive, to provide oxygen. Because the robots don't need oxygen. They all have directives. The directives is to protect these people. They have to protect the humans um, so that they can repopulate Earth when when the time comes. But even nobody knows except for Otto that the directive is to no longer go back to Earth. So they just have to protect the people, keep the people alive, keep the generations going. So uh-huh. there's plants somewhere. Either they're eating each other or where's the food coming from? Human remains where where's the Human. food coming from bunny please answer me this like okay so they could have a whole floor with plants maybe they actually have plants that provide food and they use that so maybe they use the humans for fertilizer or maybe they just burn them up i don't fucking know possibly i i uh, I I don't know. I mean, even a compost heap, you don't want to really put meat into. Exactly. You know, so, so yeah. humans would have to have here, further honey. processing. You're either eating your your fellow humans. Yeah. Like 
that's that's your grandma you're sucking down or they're burning them up and throwing them into space i can accept my eating vote. the humans my votes on the other humans because there's only so many resources when it comes to plants and usually when you're harvesting certain you know like plants and shit they don't yeah, cut their their annuals. Makes my skin so you don't get to have them year round. Like but I guess if you're <laughs> so it greenhousing so it, then sure. But I'm telling you, I'm pretty positive they're eating other people. They don't look at the cup. They just take it and start drinking. Yeah. They then they, they never chew. They don't. You know they don't look at their food. They just fucking suck it down. Sure. Um, <laughs> which another thing, animals. Do animals exist? They have to, bunny. Everything I'm saying has to exist because there's plants on that ship. There's animals on that ship. Right. They're eating each other because they have to keep the animals. They have to keep the animals alive. Because at the end, Mm -hmm. in the end credits, it shows them planting seeds of all kinds. Okay, the end credits is like, it's a nice little wrap-up. Shows the people getting skinnier, and it you know, shows them growing and learning and rebuilding civilization. And they're planting all these plants, grapes and corn and all this shit. And it shows animals. Yeah. Now, the only way that they can have animals is if there were animals on the ship. Because there's no possible way that there are animals on Earth unless they're mutated at this point. There's no vegetation. There's no vegetation on Earth. The animals cannot survive. Literally, all Earth, all life comes from the sun. The right. sun is what is going to keep the vegetation going. If we fuck up the Earth enough that we can't have vegetation, the animals are going to die. Without plants, there's no life. So there is no life on this planet. Period. Okay, at this point. Like, if humans, maybe, but I doubt it. So, they have to have animals on this ship. Because... There's fish, there's birds, there's like other animals running running around at the end credits, which uh-huh. means that they had to have searched this ship and they had to have found these animals and let them out. There's no other explanation for it. True. Because there's no possible way that they're gonna evolve you know, in that short amount of time. They sold dogs. They can eat up bad people and pets. I don't know. I doubt that they have pets. I'm How just... many humans they stayed on Earth because they couldn't bring their pets? <laughs> well, they're dead. I'm just tossing this out here. We're going to have to wrap it up soon because my attention span is waning. Oh, yes. Sorry, <laughs> I, I just I think way too much about this. Yeah. Um, but that, I, that's pretty much... I, I, I like your thoughts. That's pretty much all I've got, Bunny, is because, like... And the horrors. Think about the people when they land and they go and they search the ship and they're like, oh, let's go see what kind of resources we have in the ship that we can bring on Earth. What did they find? They find their soil and green factory? This is what we've been eating? Holy shit. The thing that I find interesting is that once they get on Earth, suddenly the captain's all, we have to work hard and we're going to plant and we're going to do all this stuff. You know that a good percentage of the people on that ship end up just staying on the ship. Yeah, they don't want to get off and they don't want to work. Yeah. They, 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 they've they, never had to yeah. work a day in their life. They yeah. don't really want to do that. Yeah, there's going to be a huge percentage of the ship that are that will revolt and stay on the ship because they have a comfortable life. Mm-hmm. I find that interesting. I could see that. Hi, honey. I I didn't mean to bore you with all of my my it's, Wally no, facts. it's 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 not that it was boring. It's just that it's you know getting late, and That's Jeannie's going to be going to bed soon. You know that kind of stuff. Oh oh no! Oh. Yeah. So uh, thank you, honey. For, and for, and I got to pee like a racehorse. Yeah, thank you for enlightening us about the horrors of Wally. It's a fucking horror film. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a No, it's but a, you know, you're not supposed movie. to know this because it's about two robots who fall in love and save the world. Yeah. It's happy, it's upbeat, it's cheery. It's got musicals, like, you know. Get the fuck out of my room. You don't do that shit. That's some uh, bullshit. Oh my God, get so, out. So next week, Bunny, 
Asshole. Yes, we have another Steve's historical approximations. We're going to be talking about the history of Barbie and uh, the the amazing story of Gay Ken. Okay. Very exciting about this. Don't forget, homework next week is volume one of uh, Salty, the singing psalm. Yes. We have another Mandela Effect moment in music history based on one of the strangest, most popular one-hit wonders of all time. Okay. Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I talked about it on in, in the car on the way home from uh, the road trip, and Natasha and Emerald had a hard time believing me that the, the end champions? of the song existed. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah so that's going to be exciting. The end no. of the no. song <laughs> existed. Yeah, yeah. They had a hard time we believing didn't, that. We didn't listen. We never listened to the song. All we the like, way we never listened. Well, we, we I never really listened to it because I didn't care for it, so I wouldn't listen what to it. And so we never listened to it all the no, way through. No, 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 and so we, after the podcast. we actually shut the fuck up in the car and we listened to it and we were like, holy shit, you're right. Wow, that's uh, that's something. So yeah. yeah, you got that to look forward to. Yeah. Okay. Next week, next week, Bunny, yes. I'm gonna surprise you. I'm surprising you. All right. Next week. Next week for the podcast, we are watching a Japanese film on Netflix that is just called Tag. <laughs> okay. It's best if you know nothing about it. So okay. don't Google it. Don't 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 look it up. Nothing. Just watch this film. It's a Japanese film. It's called Tag. Just trust me. This okay. is gonna be fun. Peter. That could okay? be frightening. Yes. Okay, yeah, no, it's going to be exciting. Oh, right. So that's So that is next week on the podcast. And I got to say this week uh uh it's been a long one. Yes. But I got to say this has been Yeah, sorry. It's okay. This has been this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. We got a damn this time, huh? So you know that that means that this was a good episode when he says damn at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Eleanor wants booby. Did I, I hope you got that because that was adorable. <laughs> oh, not happy. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams, and I am Reverend Steve. I just got kicked in the spine, and on behalf of Deanna and Destiny and Natasha and Bella. Eleanor and Bella and Maxwell and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. You godless heathens. And you Jewish waffles and poopy tits. Sorry, I was slow. I was trying to do something. All right, whatever. Do, 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 do. How did you get my tablet? Do, 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 do. How did you get my from, tablet? She takes it from the little ones. Yeah, you just she take it from the other kids. Do, 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 do. No, like, do, do, feel do, do, do. it. You like, should see my tip, man. What yeah, about literally? Oh, never mind. I don't are we all comparing? We're all vein. comparing tit veins. We're all comparing <laughs> tit veins. <laughs> Mine does that too. Do, 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 do. Nah, you're do, good. Do, 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 do. We have extra. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's good. Cut and print. <laughs>